Strap in boys and girls, you wanted it, you got it. Today's video, we're gonna go over some things that I use that you've got to know about. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is a little different. I'm in between projects. I wanted to go over some things uh, that I use in my models day in and day out that you've been asking about. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about preparation a little bit. So preparation is key when you're uh, printing and developing these models for paint, getting them ready. I've done a video on this a while back, but I still use this thing uh, simply because it's an amazing tool and it's called the G tool. So the G tool right here is basically a polisher. And what I use this for is I use this to help get all of the uh, support leftovers or any type of wave lines or anything like that that's in the model. Uh, this right here will actually help get that off. Um, it's not a sander necessarily, it's a polisher. It's really gonna smooth down the surface even more than what it already is. And basically it's like almost like a toothbrush, an electric toothbrush. And it's got this rotating disc on the end which are removable, they're little sandpaper disc that it comes with. And you get a bunch of those. It's really great if you're trying to get into tight spots or just surface polishing. So going down the list here, the next thing that I recommend, and I'm sure everybody knows about it, it's wood filler. However, this right here, and it's almost empty because I've been using it so much, this is a plastic wood filler. I believe I got this at Walmart, it's like $5. Um, but this goes on very, very smooth. Uh, you can thin it out with water. It's really good for deep seams or light scratches or whatever you have imperfections in the model. I stumbled across this just by chance and I picked it up and this is the only wood filler that I'll use. Uh, it doesn't crack as it dries or anything like that. I've seen some wood fillers that will actually do that, uh, but this does not do that. It dries in no time at all. It's pretty tough stuff, so I do recommend this right here. If you're not using a wood filler uh, or, or if you're using a wood filler, uh, try and check this out right here. So this stuff right here is really good. Um, it dries hard, dries smooth, it's easy to sand, and basically it just comes out, I've been using a lot of this stuff, so basically it just comes out of the tube, like almost like a toothpaste type form. Just comes out like this, and then you can see it's kinda, kinda lumpy, but you can just take and uh, put it on your model, and if you need to thin it out or whatever, it thins out with water, get you a little bit of water. I'll take a paintbrush and dip it in water and then just uh, thin it out over the area such as that. The next thing that I generally use after I'm prepping my model, uh, right before primer and stuff, and this is a simple thing, and chances are you probably got it in your house already or in your possession, and that's some thick makeup brushes. Uh, this stuff is really good for dusting off uh, your models and getting them ready for a primer. Uh, or just, you know, uh, cleaning uh, your, you know, dusting your models or whatever like that, or your collectibles or anything like that. These are really, really good. So I've got one that's really fine, uh, really, really soft, and I got one that's a little coarse. Uh, the coarse one will actually help get off any of the uh, stuff that's in your cracks and crevices of your model or whatever. Uh, since it's a little stiffer, you can get it in there. It works great whenever, like, you are dusting at home and you're you know you're going through your cabinets and your collectibles and you're dusting this is really really good the light one right here uh, you can also use these for dry brushing these are really good too like if you have large surface areas that you need dry brushing these work wonders as well so let's talk about adhesives because i'm not a huge fan of super glue especially in some of the models that i do because i make a lot of larger models larger pieces uh, and super glue, I have found over the years, becomes brittle. Uh, it just wears out its little welcome, I guess you could say. Your parts tend to fall off. So I've been using this two-part, five-minute epoxy from BSI. Uh, and this is the only kind that I'll use. I've used the JB Weld stuff, and it is complete junk. Um, it yellows. Uh, it takes its own time drying. It takes forever to dry. It's right here. This is the real deal stuff. So this is what I glue most of my parts with, especially larger models that have to you put arm you have to put arms together, heads on, whatever. Um, but this is the only thing that I'll use, and I've been using this for years now. And this next thing right here that I use, I I would be lost without it, guys. I mean, I'm I'm older now, and the eyes are not what they used to be. 
And so I use these uh, optics right here, and I call them optics. It's a magnifying glass that you wear on your head. Um, yeah, I don't wear the hat all the time. Right here really allows me to get up close onto a model, uh, look at the extra details that goes in it, and uh, really helps me out to nail it. I mean, just it, I can get in there and nail those little small detail pieces that I couldn't see with my just regular eyes. So definitely look into getting one of these. If you're having trouble seeing details, definitely this would help you out. Uh, these are like 20 bucks. You can find them anywhere like hobby stores or Amazon. Um, but yeah, these are really good to, to have on hand just in case you need that extra, uh, extra closeness or extra eyes <laughs> in order to see some of these details. So the next thing that I've got here for you, and I've done a video for this a while back, but um, I swear by this thing. Um, if you have not tried one of these out, and that's one of these portable airbrushes, uh, this thing here is basically a small compressor um, that you can use. Um, it runs about 30, 35 PSI, and um, it, I mean, yeah, so it cranks you up once you get it charged. It doesn't run off batteries. It charges up for USB, um, but, you know, you can basically use this, like if you were in the space constraints, you just looking just to you know, quickly do something through an airbrush or whatever, this would probably benefit you uh, big time. Um, you don't have to worry about a big compressor or anything like that. There are advantages and disadvantages of using this right here. Uh, the one advantage is it's small, compact. You can pretty much take it anywhere, use it anywhere. But yeah, something you definitely might want to look into. So I have a few kept secrets that I don't usually let out or whatever. I just kind of keep them to myself. But this one I'm going to share with you. If you guys have not tried this right here, you've got to go out and get some of this. Uh, it is just something very simple that's the little things, you know? It's the little things. But this right here is Liquid Leaf. It is a gold paint. Uh, and let me tell you, this is the only gold paint that you'll need. So this stuff takes really, really well to any surface area. It's lacquer based. Um, but what I like about it is if you ever want to paint anything in aged gold, uh, you just put this on and then you just run a black wash over it. And then you can basically use this to go back and dry brush over it. It looks amazing. I use it on all of my models. And uh, this stuff right here, I think is like eight or nine dollars. Um, but it is well worth it. It is almost like a just a gold leaf type paint in your hand. This is magic in a bottle right here, I'm telling you. So with this liquid leaf here, this stuff is, uh, it's pretty potent, but it does the trick. Um, when you open it here, as you can see, uh, you get a very, very good type of gold leaf. Uh, at first in the jar, it almost looks like a brass type color, but once you put it on a model, it is unbelievable. It comes out a very vibrant gold. And like I said, you can use this to uh, put it on a base and then use a wash, um, use a black wash on it, and then uh, go back over it with some dry brush. But that stuff right here, I use a lot in my models. The one thing you probably have heard about from other painters or other modelers that you probably have not got into trying yet, some people are afraid to, some people are not so much, is chalk pastels. So if you're looking to do some sort of shading, you can use chalk pastels uh, if you don't have an airbrush. Some sort of pigment powders or something like that, you can make those on your own. You don't have to go out and spend uh, a bunch of money for these pigment powders. All right, so on the pastels, it's pretty simple. I like to wear gloves because this stuff does tend to get everywhere on your hands and everything, and you definitely don't want to get it on your models after you've been handling this. But typically what I do is I'll just grab a stick and a razor blade and I'll just start scraping some of this off like in just in a dust form. And uh, I will actually just use it to put on a brush and to dab it in the areas that I'm looking to, uh, looking to put it on. The cool thing is that you can get all kinds of different colors. Uh, you can get a big thing of chalk pastels from a hobby store for like six or seven dollars. Uh, and if you don't have an airbrush, this stuff works wonders. You can use this in terrains. You can use it uh, for shading or just for whatever that you want. Okay, so the last thing that a lot of people ask me about is what do I finish my models with? Um, so once I'm done completing everything, uh, you seal your model, put a clear coat on it or whatever. I've 
posted this in a couple of videos, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys right now in case you're new to the channel. But this stuff right here, this is a Krylon Color Max. This is a rattle can, I know. Uh, some people shy away from it, but let me tell you. They make this in a flat, a satin, and a gloss. And this stuff here is the best top coat I've ever used whatsoever. I don't know what's in it. But when you get your model painted and you put this stuff on here, it just accentuates your colors. It really brings out that vibrancy and stuff in your model. Uh, it just makes your colors pop. It's non-yellowing, and um, I think this is probably the best stuff that I've ever used as far as a rattle can clear coat. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Again, this is some things that I use on all of my models, every process, um, but I wanted to share with you some of these things that I use. Now, if you're looking to either support the channel or join a group with a bunch of modelers or painters and to discuss things like this and learn tricks of the trade, you might want to consider and join in my Patreon. The link's below in the description, and we would love to have you over there. And I have one new member joining me this week. That is Willie Cash. Thanks, Willie, and thank you for everyone else supporting the channel. Of course, there's other ways to support the channel. You can always watch the videos, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and even share the videos. And I hope this helps you guys out. If you need any more suggestions or anything like that, make sure to drop me a comment below or any suggestions, drop a comment below. And until the next video, everybody, thank you so much for your support. Print, prep, paint, repeat. Get out there and create something and we'll see you.